And welcome to Greenstock News Corporate All Access Interview Series. I'm your host, Darcy, and today on the show, we welcome Robert Shuchuk, Chairman and CEO of Lithium Bank Resources Corp. The company trades under the symbol LBNK on the TSXV. Lithium Bank is creating an opportunity to participate in the future of clean tech energy. And at its helm is Rob, an Alberta-based investor with 25 years experience in the capital markets. Hi, Rob, and welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about Lithium Bank resources and how you got involved? Thanks, Darcy. Lithium Bank was formed in 2019. Our mission was to target and acquire the highest quality known uh, lithium assets in Western Canada. That was at a time when the price of lithium dove under $10,000 a ton and companies that owned the most attractive lithium assets in Alberta, you know, they can no longer afford to carry in costs to hold those. And our vision was that there would be an electric vehicle 2.0 boom of epic proportions that we, we felt would be take place in the 2020s. And we felt like it would endure for decades to come. And of course, that supply and demand and technology is that advancement you know, on the DLE uh, side would line up. And of course, if that was the case, that would provide an epic opportunity for investors to participate in the future you know, of green energy. So tell us what your portfolio of assets looks like today. And so our current portfolio of assets is about 3.2 million acres of lithium uh, claims in Alberta and Saskatchewan. Of that, our flagship asset, Sturgeon Lake, is over 750,000 acres. Uh, for a sense of scale, our Sturgeon Lake asset, uh, if you thought about it like a bathtub of lithium, it's the size of the state of Rhode Island, and it's over 100 stories high. So you can almost fit the Eiffel Tower in it. One of the many unique things about Lithium Bank is that beyond our flagship asset, Sturgeon, we got a, a very deep portfolio, as I mentioned, 3.2 million acres of other prospective assets you know, that will no doubt contribute to shareholder value in parallel you know, with Sturgeon as the lithium industry continues to evolve. Wow, con congrats on all of that. And thank you for the imagery that helps picture how big it is. Yeah. And that, that, that leads me to, to the next question about, you mentioned Sturgeon Lake. So what is so special about this flagship project? Yeah, so Sturgeon Lake currently infers just over 6 million tons LCE with, uh, we think, significant growth potential beyond that. Beyond the exceptional tonnage potential you know, that Sturgeon already has are a number of other attributes that make it a one-of-a-kind anomaly, not the least of which are, you know, as exceptional flow rates of thousands of barrels. It's an ideal temperature and pH match for our DLE processing that, that may reduce the need for, you know, costly consumables uh, that drive up CapEx and OpEx in your PEAs and PFSs. It's in a great location, 270 kilometers west of uh, Edmonton, Alberta, in a province that understands and has been supporting and investing in, in resource extraction and processing such as oil and gas for generations. And people, you know, often one ask me why why focus on Al in, in Alberta? And I think that there's a number of reasons for that. And not the least of which is that Alberta is quickly becoming a major lithium resource area by virtue of you know, the published uh, resources and firms of lithium bank and E3 metals. And there's a number of Alberta-based companies making great strides towards developing DLE, this direct lithium extraction technology using ion exchange, et cetera, to enable low-cost lithium hydroxide production, we believe. And we believe that these are licensable technologies that will empower a growing industry in Alberta. And beyond that, Lithium Bank is going to benefit from the Alberta government's recent passing of Bill 82 uh, that put lithium under the purview of the Alberta Energy Regulator. And that's going to provide accelerated lithium uh, production permitting, not currently possible in, in other provinces. And three, I would say Alberta provides a strong social license for, for resource extraction industries historically and has a super experienced and talented you know, workforce in a great location with massively leverageable infrastructure and a proven track record of, of vertical uh, integration expertise. And lastly, I would say that the recent developments we've seen TransCanada Energy partner with reported this week, planning to spend billions on green energy hydrogen production for electric trucks and power generation just south of Edmonton, as well as Amazon, currently spending billions building out a robotic uh, fulfillment distribution center just west of Edmonton. You know, I think that demonstrates that some of the biggest and, and most innovative companies in the world have decided that Alberta is a place to lay down infrastructure to support generations to come. 
Wow. Well, thank you so much for that. Congrats on, you know, your flagship project, first of all, but also thank you for the insight into Alberta. That's fascinating. And I'm sure our viewers will really be interested in that. So switching gears a little bit, how does Lithium Bank compare to other publicly listed direct brine lithium developers like Standard Lithium, E3 Metals, and Lake Resources? Yeah, so I think those are all direct comps, obviously, North America and South American direct bride projects. From a market cap perspective, we're currently around a $50 million market cap or pre-PEA. I don't think any of those companies had higher market caps when they were pre-PEA. So sub $50 million. And of course, today, E3's market cap would be somewhere closer to three times that. You know, we produced a PEA, went from $0.30 cents to $5 a share, currently trading around $250. Standard Lithium would have a market cap that went from sub 50 million pre-PA to a billion five or more. And Lake Resources, same thing, sub 50 million pre-PA to now more than $2 billion. So that just goes to show you how, how important a PEA is. We have our PEA coming out in the next couple of months here. So we've said by July, we expect that has the potential to be an extraordinary PEA. We very much look forward to allowing people to see what we what we really own uh, in Sturgeon Lake and, and why it's so special and, and why we believe that the rest of our portfolio can also add significant value, uh, shareholder value over time. Well, first of all, it's impressive you knew all those numbers off the top of your head. And last question before we wrap up, why should investors pay attention to Lithium Bank? Well, our, our our team's current focus is on our, as I mentioned, on Sturgeon Lake and our PEA. I think they should pay attention because we have world-class people working on this project. PEA is led by Hatch, world-renowned engineering firm. Um, as I said, it's scheduled for, you know, July of this year. And we think that it, it has like significant potential to demonstrate, you know, that, that Sturgeon Lake represents one of the most attractive contiguous potentially carbon neutral direct brine lithium resources in North America, certainly where direct brine compares it, you know, as we just talked about recently, have market caps in the billions. And uh, assuming we have positive results from our PEA, you know, we'll move on to some pilot to plant and field work with a view to upgrading our, our inferred resources to measure than indicated. And then we'll commence a pre-feasibility study. And, and, and one of the unique things about the lithium business in terms of resources versus gold and copper and, and some of these other businesses is that you can move a project from PEA to PFS rather quickly, comparatively speaking, and, and cost effectively. And of course, as you move it from PEA to PFS, you take risk out of it, and that increases the likelihood that, that you might get a banker to fund commercial development or a buyer to accelerate it through the production. And in this case, as early as 2025, which is just unheard of in terms of timeline to production. Wow. Well, that's amazing to know regarding timeline. And like you said, lithium as compared to others and how quickly it can move. That's really great to know. So Rob, is there anything that you would like to share with our viewers or that we didn't get to discuss today? Well, you can find us uh, listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange Venture Exchange. Uh, you know, we listed April 1st. There's an opportunity for for everyone to own a share of Lithium Bank, we certainly love everybody to be a shareholder and uh, you can find us under the symbol LBNK. Well, thank you so much. So just to reiterate what Rob said, the company trades under the symbol LBNK on the TSXV. For more information, visit lithiumbank.ca. Thank you so much, Rob. Thanks for joining us and for watching Green Stock News. Thanks for having me, Darcy. Thanks for watching Green Stock News. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you want to see daily Green Stock News videos, hit the subscribe button. And if you have something to say, please leave a comment. Green Stock News for the new green economy. Thanks again for watching and make sure you click on the subscribe button.